Well, this past week, the Adams administration rolled out the next phase in its crackdown of illegal smoke shops with a warning to landlords and building owners. The city ready to hold them responsible if their tenants illegally sell cannabis or tobacco. So I want to bring in New York City Sheriff Anthony Miranda, who oversees all of this. Thank you for coming on Picks on Politics. Thank you for inviting us. This is important conversation here. Let's begin with the landlords and why go after them now. Well, the landlords are the next phase of reforms. So Councilwoman Lynn Shulman passed that city council law that says we need to hold the landlords accountable. It is a good next step. Some landlords are duped into, didn't know that cannabis shops are going to be opening up in the locations. They sign leases for mm -hmm. delis and grocery stores, and then they turn it into something else. And other landlords have, are conscientiously illegally renting these places, knowing that they're going to be conducting illegal business in there. You know, some of these places are not hiding. They are out there in plain sight with big marijuana symbols right on the window. Now, according to the mayor's office, the task force has handed out $40 million in fines, right? You see $23 million in product. Are the fines, though, when you look at the totality, it's a lot of fines and they're still open. So are they working to deter the kind of activity you're seeing? I think that the, they have recently passed legislation to increase the fines, so you're going to see a different response. In the beginning, they were getting the fines, and it was a matter, of course, of doing business. And I think that was something that the mayor was clear to and the city council about. Let's change that conversation about just doing the course of business. They can pay the fines. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make sure that the fines were having a greater impact. Okay, so the fines are raised. You haven't really seen the impact on that yet. Right, that's something that's still still happening as we go on now. The state office of cannabis enforcement is the one that got the largest ability to issue the largest fines right now, and that's the imbalance in the in the law because we have to be able to have city enforcement mm -hmm. that issues the same uh, levels, the same kind of leverage on the people. Well, let me ask you this question, right? Because the fines are one thing, but it's it's illegal, right? It's an illegal activity to sell the the marijuana product. Why can't you just go in as the sheriff and either shut the shop down or place people under arrest and say you can't do business? Again, everybody is entitled to the due process. So even if we go in and do an inspection and we find the illegal products there, we issue the violations and we issue the civil summonses, but they still have to have their day in court. Mm -hmm. So the person that actually put, issues the order to closing, closing down a location is not us, it is the judge. The judge imposes the fines and the penalties, and then they issue the orders, and then we execute the orders. That's important to know, so just to reiterate that point, because I think a lot of folks I hear from on the street are, why is this open? They went in there and they seized all the product, but it's not up to you to shut the shop to shut the shop down. No, it's up to us to enforce the law as, it, as it's written, and that's what we do in the most fair, fair and unbiased way that we can, right. hold the people accountable, but then ultimately they have to have due process and they have to have the day in court. And then the judge will decide whether this location deserves to be closed down immediately. They'll issue the orders and then we'll execute those orders. Have you seen repeat offenders who are given fines and are back open or have gone to court back selling product? Again, part of nuisance abatement enforcement is that you generally have to go back at least three times to certain locations. So that's what the judges are looking for, okay. which also makes it a process that we have to continually, it's not a one-shot, one-time visit and close down. You have to have multiple offenses to be able to present that in court. Okay, so you have a busy task ahead of you, right? And part of the mission of the task force, again, from what we're hearing on the folks on the street, are some of these shops are near schools, right? So how are you handling the education for youth who are now easily accessible to this kind of product? So now we are working with the PTAs, the various school administrations as, as well. We're also working with NYC Cannabis when they go out and do community, uh, community uh, events. Mm -hmm. So the Sheriff's Office and law enforcement in general are all part of those conversations. We want to create the, the, the proper balance. The illegal shops are basically have a negative impact on our communities as mm -hmm. well, right? The revenue that's supposed to be benefiting us, we're losing it. These people are stealing from, our, from us. So I always tell that to the people in the communities that these illegal shops, they're stealing from us, so we should not be going and soliciting them for any other products mm -hmm. if they're engaged in the illegality. And the dangers that they're presenting to our children are tremendous. Their packaging is all toward all the children's products, all right. the children's candies, all the children's cereals. So this is not meant to target our adults. These are people who are deliberately targeting the youth. Do the peg cuts from the mayor's office that have affected things like the MIPD, does that affect your office and how you go about the enforcement now? It, the pegs will enforce, impact the entire city. Um, we'll work with the resources and make sure that we have the proper response. The good thing about the task force is that we leverage everybody's personnel. Mm -hmm. So it's not just one agency feeling the burden of it. Working together, we get to work together collectively. It's a better response also. It's, it's the sheriff's office, mm -hmm. NYPD, DCWP, uh, Department of Health, the fire department, the buildings department. So we use everybody collectively. So I think that's how we get the proper balance that we're looking for. Understood. Keep us posted on the new round of fines and how that has an impact. You're welcome back to talk about it anytime, okay? Thank you so much. Sheriff Miranda, good to see you.